the earlier description ignored one important relationship between jobs and migration. It takes time for people to learn about jobs and job opportunities and to re relocate, right. It is going to take some time. Further, people probably respond to average number of job openings city and not to short term increases or decreases in the job openings, right. So, that is what you are going to react to. Now, we are going to modify this our existing model by introducing a stock called as perceived job openings and based on a which will be based on a first order information delay with a smoothing constant of say 0 0.25 per month. So, perceived job openings let us just create that. So, create a stock as soon as create a stock immediately add a flow because stocks can only be changed through flow else you will be too tempted to just put another variable and your system may not work the way you expect it to. So, immediately you just change it ok this is a change in perceived openings and the new information let us model smoothing factor. Now, this perceived job openings reacts to the actual value of job openings right. So, here the reported value or the actual value will be the job opening itself. So, this and your current value will be your perceived job openings ok. And now, instead of reacting to the job openings they are going to react migration reacts to perceived job openings. So, I am going to click delete, delete is trash bin then you click this arrow, click arrow, click perceived job openings which feeds into migration. So, now, if you select your uh, equation dots are going to be in black let us say smoothing factor is 0 0.25 1 per month. Change in perceived values is both units are same job openings minus perceived job openings multiplied by smoothing factor units is job unit of job opening is job. So, this has to be job per month oh sorry this should be job per month perceived job openings let us keep it as 800 or oh sorry job 800 and migration does not react to job openings it reacts to perceived job openings. So, the equation get updated into perceived job openings into people to job ratio divided by adjustment time. If you want the equations for this, it continues to be plus plus minus plus. You can see it. So, now we have two stocks in the system. This itself is a delay because adjustment time we have taken as uh, 2, that means after 2 months is average time it takes for people to move. So, that is the time it takes to move. Now, we are putting additional thing called as additional information delay where even job opening information is received later and then based on the perceived job openings, people migrate and uh, people migrate and fill the jobs. Now, let us simulate this, let us override. Now, if we let us look at people, again just to clarify we can go to jobs, job is same constant at 1000, there is no change in jobs, job was again at 1000. The perceived job openings, It is still fluctuating in this case. It did not react if it was only a first order delay, then from initial value of perceived job opening was 1000 and then it has to was it 800? Okay, let me uh, 
let us make the perceived job opening 0. So, let us assume there is no jobs initially. Now, let me simulate it again. Okay. So, initially it was 0 and then when additional 200 jobs came about, that is a time 0 it came about additional 200 jobs. So, initial people was 800, jobs was 1000. So, when it changed, similarly started to increase, but it did not saturate at to fill the gap, it started fluctuating. Let us see why, because if it is only a first order system, it cannot fluctuate, we know that it has to smoothly reach the target, we just simulated it for demand right, the same ex behavior we need to expect. So, the only variable which also can keep changing can cause this behavior is not the jobs, but we are taking the difference between jobs and the people, there is second stock in the system. So, let us see the behavior of that, let me get all the output variables, jobs, people. Uh, this is fine. Yes. Oops. So, this is a perceived job openings in the people. So, as soon as there are some jobs that are perceived, then people started to slowly come in, and as they started coming in, you know, because of the delays involved, it overshot the number of people in system overshot. That means, I have more people than the jobs. So, then it try to compensate because the delays it overcompensated again it fell down too much than it can take and then again it kind of fluctuate fluctuated and then finally, damped uh, finally saturated at the or I reach a steady state at around 0 here and around 1000. So, steady state values continue to be 1000. So, these kind of oscillation we call it as damped oscillations, the oscillations are not consistent kind of damps. So, to get a system to oscillate, we need minimum two stocks and just this information asks us to allow the system to first exceed then what it has to be the goal and then it overcompensates down and again it increases etcetera and slowly only it is going to converge. People end up choosing say mechanical and safe disciplines I do not know or uh, may choose unsafe new disciplines. I so, this allows this so, that means, you, can, you just saw what happened right, because of the, the small delay in information, more people were there than jobs available. So, more people are there, jobs less jobs are there, then instead of migration, you can imagine migrating to that particular field or number of people are going to join there right. So, then again people overcompensate, then suddenly there is more demand, the system is going to fluctuate. But in this case, it, the delays were short, we have adjustment time of 2 months and uh, smoothing factor of 0.25, when reality is much smaller, the smoothing factors adjustment time is much larger. So, these fluctuations are very large and there are more delays involved, we just had two forms of delay, one is just migration delay, other is the uh, perceived openings delay, we have so many other delays which is going to sustain the, the fluctuations for a really long time, maybe 50 years, 60 years, 100 years. So, that is a really really long time uh, before it can actually reach whatever its carrying capacity is going to be. Uh, like here we assume the smoothing constant is con smoothing constant variable is constant, but that can also change. I can update it based on the new information available. Okay. I am going to I am going to decide to react quickly to the new information or not. So, that can be another factor which will again further cause more dynamics in the system. But now we are going to see real nonlinear dynamics when you introduce two stocks. So, in Moodle only the first uh, model is there, this one is there. So, you have to make it dimensionally consistent, then add the next stock and flow, only then you will be able to see the damped oscillations. So, you have to do it, if not now, later. Now, higher order information delays, what does it mean and how do you model it? In first order delay, the beliefs change immediately on changes to input. In higher order delays, it takes time for the belief to change. It responds only after some delay. A simplest form of it is a pipeline information delay, where if it is, you are only going to report a measurement delay or reporting delay, where values are not changed, I am just going to communicate it. Then it is, you can model it very similar to a pipeline material delay. Uh, so, that information is conveyed, there is no change in the information. 
uh, let me just uh, give example of the third order information delay. The third order information delay in, in material delay, what did you do? We had a first order material delay and we connected 3 in series to call it a third order material delay, right. In a similar concept, we will do a third order information delay where we will cascade 3 first order information delay. Let us do third order information delay. Let us define a stock S1. Change in S1. Let us take that as an input and let us take a average uh, delay. So, this is the easiest right whatever input changes this is a first order delay right it is just written in a drawn in a slightly different fashion, but it is nothing but a simple uh, first order delay where your equation for d s 1 by d t is nothing but uh, uh, input minus s 1 divided by d by let us make it d by 3. Third order delay, I am going to divide the total average delay into 3 equal compartments. So, whatever input minus s1 is what I am changing. Now, when it happens, when I want to start drawing the uh, second order and third order, what I am going to do is define another stock as 2, and call it as change in s2 change in S2 is get affected by S2 and the information from S1 so d S2 by d t is nothing but S1 minus S2 divided by d by 3. So, now if I increase my input initially assume input is equal to stock 1 equal to stock 2 now let me finish it and then I will explain. Let us put a stock 3, then I have it as change in S3, plus minus average delay. Then I have final output plus and your ds3 by dt is s2 minus S3 divided by D by 3 and your output is nothing but this stock value S3. Okay. So, what happens when I change my input? Assume input equal to stock S1 equal to S2 equal to S3 equal to output. So, input is equal to output, system is steady state, no change. Suppose input changes by 1 unit, then based on the difference first this stock changes, the next time period only this stock is going to change and reach the value, change the value of new value of input and then this value is going to change. So, this is how you model the information delay. Since again as you can see information is not conserved, suppose input increased from 0 to 10 the pulse input and then it became again 0 at time 1 then this will increase. So, based on average delay it will increase say one third of it. This will increase one third of this, this will increase one third of even that. Right. So, it is like almost like Chinese whispers. You start with 1 and this may can maximum grow up to one third of it assume delay is you know one third of based on the delay value and again it will go one third of that and then one third of that. So, each time we are going to keep reducing a final final output will be a third order delay of this input and just like we had what is the function delay and function in uh, Wensum to model these in shortcut 
when sim has something called as a smooth function in when sim in this smooth function you can directly connect the input to the output and give the average delay it will smooth the input based on the order of the delay and give the value of the output you can play it with the examples already available in when sim for the smooth function to directly do that because as you can see if you are going to model let us say fifth order delay just making all these talks itself is going to make your model so complicated so, th that is when the smooth function helps. Most of the systems we deal with will be a first order delay, uh, like demand forecasting, people use exponential smoothing. Very few cases we explicitly go for second order delays and other higher orders, uh, just because it is so difficult to comprehend once you start looking at higher order information delay. Uh, so, it may be easier for us to explicitly model them, like we did in the previous example, we explicitly model change in the per seed value and change in the migration separately may be easier for us to model that. So, there is some physical relation. Uh, so, there is physical context to the model that we are building, uh, but in case you know we want to hire or delay this is what is going to be. 